Hello friends, welcome to our channel Engineering and Technology for You. In today's video, you will learn the 8051 architecture and its features. Let us start with the features. For knowing the architecture, we should know first the features. So let us discuss the features first. It is a 8-bit CPU. Then it has on-chip clock oscillator for generating the clock signal. Then 4 kilobytes of on-chip program memory. The next feature is 128 bytes of data RAM or random access memory. Then 64 kilobytes of program memory address space. As it has got 16-bit address bus it can address 64 kilobytes of memory then 64 kilobytes of data memory address space then 32 bidirectional IO lines now these lines can be used as 4 8-bit ports or as 32-bit individually addressable lines then the next feature is two 16-bit timer counters for the timing and counting operations then it has got serial IO port for either multiprocessor communication IO expansion or full duplex UART that is nothing but universal asynchronous receive transmitter then the last feature is 5 vector interrupt structure so these are the features of 8051 now these features can see in a simple block diagram as you can see here 8051 CPU and then we have the 128 bytes of data memory then 4 kilobytes of program memory then 2 timer counters which are 16 bit T0 and T1 then there is a serial port with the input RxD and the output txt so it is nothing but the serial port for the full duplex uart operation then we have got the ports io ports which are there are 32 lines and four ports p0 p1 p2 and p3 all these four ports they are 8 bit they can be used at separate four ports or individual 32 bit lines then here this is a 64k bus expansion control here we have got the control signal ALE and PSEN for the bus control then there is a on chip oscillator and timing circuit which will generate the clock then we have the interrupts are shown here INT0, INT1 and these are the three internal interrupts so this is the simple block diagram of 8051 now let us move on to the details the 8051 includes an 8-bit CPU 4 8-bit IO ports 2 timer counters and serial port using a universal asynchronous receive transmitter this is what we have seen in the previous diagram now the CPU, CPU includes the arithmetic and logic unit ALU, then instruction decoder and timing generation unit and CPU registers. Then arithmetic and logic unit performs the computing function. It is used for all arithmetic and logical functions. The instruction decoder and control are parts of timing and control unit. When an instruction is fetched from program memory, it is loaded in the instruction register. Then the decoder decodes the instruction and establishes the sequence of events to follow. The timing, generation and control unit synchronizes all microcontroller operations with the help of the clock and generates control signals necessary for communication between processor and peripheral. So that will 
control all the events in the microcontroller. Then you can see this diagram. This is the detailed diagram of the functional log diagram you can say. So here you can see the timing and control unit. Here it is the oscillator will generate the clock and it will supply the clock to the timing and control unit. And there is an instruction register for storing the instruction. Then we have the CPU. We already discussed the ALU. ALU it is for the arithmetic and logical operations. Here uh, we are here to dis discuss the PSW program status word. Then we have the accumulator B register. So these registers will be used along with the ALU for the arithmetic and logical operations. Let us go back. The accumulator. Accumulator is used in all the arithmetic and logical operations and has a direct connection to ALU. It is bit addressable register meaning that each bit of the accumulator can be accessed for reading or for altering. Then register A or accumulator is also used for all data transfer between 8051 and any external memory. Then register B. This is a 8 bit register used during multiply and division operations along with the accumulator or A register. Then program status word, the 8-bit program status word PSW, it can, it contains the arithmetic status of the ALU and bank select bits for the data memory. So the flags are included here. After the arithmetic and logical operations, the carry, auxiliary carry, parity and overflow flags of PSW register are set or reset according to the result. So you can see the bits for the flag. Bit 7 is the carry flag. Then there is AC. Then F0 is the user flag. Then RS1 and RS0. These are the register bank select bits. Then OV is the overflow flag and P is the parity flag. Let us go to the details of this. So bit 7 that is for the carry flag carry or borrow so when two 8-bit operands are added the result may exceed 8-bit and the 9th bit is copied in the carry bit or carry flag during subtraction if borrow occurs the carry bit is set otherwise it is cleared then bit 6 it is auxiliary carry bit this bit indicates a carry from the lower nibble during 8-bit addition. If auxiliary carry is set, it means there is a carry from 3rd to 4th bit position. Then bit 5, the F0 is available to the user for general purpose. It is a user flag. Then bit 4 and 3, RS1, RS0, that is for register banks, select bit. We will see it after some time. Then bit 2 that is the OV flag. It is used for detecting errors in the signed arithmetic operations. When two signed numbers are added, if the result exceeds the destination, overflow flag is set, else it is reset. Then bit 1 undefined flag and bit 0 is the parity flag is set if the result contains even number of ones, else it is reset. Then let us come back to the register bank RS1, RS0. These two will de decide which bank is to be selected. If it is 0, 0, then select bank 0. 0, 1, select bank 1. 1, 0, select bank 2. And 1, 1, select bank 3. So with the help of this, we can select the banks, register bank as we have four banks in 805. Then let us go to the other CPU registers. 
first is the stack pointer the stack pointer is a 8 bit register and it is incremented before the data is stored onto the stack using push or call instruction execution the 8 bit address of the stack top is stored in this register here remember the stack pointer is 8 bit and it is initialized to 07 after reset operation here the stack begins at location 08h then the next register is data pointer dptr dptr is a 16 bit register it consists of a higher byte dph and a lower byte dpl of 16 bit address it is used to furnish address information for internal and external program memory and external data memory then program counter program counter is a 16 bit register the 16 bit program counter specifies the address of the next instruction to be executed so again coming back to the diagram you can see the cpu registers see already we have discussed the accumulator b register they are used during the multiply and division instructions then alu is used for all the arithmetic and logical operations and the psw the result of the operations that will be the flags will be set according to this in psw then on this side we have the stack pointer the for the stack operation then data pointer that is 16 bit register and then program counter again it is a 16 bit register so these are some of the registers of the cpu then let us go further port 0 port 1 port 2 port 3 latches and drivers so here we have four latches and drivers for the four ports each latch and corresponding driver of the port 0 to 3 is allotted to the corresponding on chip IO port all ports are bidirectional input output ports of 8 bit each the addresses of the latch are stored in special function register yeah. SFR using these addresses port 0 to 3 can be can communicate with other ICs and all input output signals the output drivers for port 0 port 2 and the input buffer support 0 are used in access to external memory then let us come to the timer registers there are two 16 bit timer registers in 8051 the 16 bit timer registers can be accessed as their lower and upper bytes tl0 and th0 represent the lower byte and higher byte of the timer register 0 respectively in the same way tl1 and tl th1 will represent the lower byte and higher byte of the timer register 1 respectively then there is a timer control tcon and timer mode tmod register to configure all timers and counters in various modes we will see the details when we study the timers then let us come to the serial port data buffer and control registers the serial port data buffer internally consists of two independent registers such as transmit buffer and receive buffer at the same location the transmit buffer is parallel in serial out or PISO PISO register then serial data receive buffer is a serial in parallel out SIPO register the serial data buffer is identified as SBUF so if the data is moved to SBUF it goes to transmit buffer and set the serial transmission 
when data is moved from ESBuff, it receives serial data from the receive buffer. Then the control registers. The control registers consist of registers such as interrupt priority IP. It is for the interrupt priority. Then interrupt enable that is IE. It is for enabling the interrupts. Then timer mode T mode. It is for the different modes of the timer. Then T con it is for controlling the timer. Then serial port control S con and power control P con. So these are the control registers. All registers have allotted address in the special function register band of 805. Then let us move on to the diagram. You can see the say let us say first we will see the control registers P con, S con, T mod, T con then IE and IP they are here then for the timer we have got say two registers say here TH0 TL0 for timer 0 and TH1 and TH2 for timer 2 then for the serial port we have the yes buff which is shown here so this is showing you all the registers which are part of the SFR special function register. Then let us move on. Here uh, we also discuss the port drivers, port one driver, port one latch, port three driver, port three latch, port two latch, and port two driver port 0 driver and port 0 latch. So these are the latches and drivers for different ports. Then let us go for the memory. Now the memory in this we have the first block that is the RAM block. This block provides internal 128 bytes of RAM. Then RAM address buffer the RAM address buffer is used to generate the address of RAM internally. Then EEPROM or ROM and program address register. This is an on-chip EEPROM or ROM and basic circuit mechanism to internally address the memory. EEPROM is available in 8051, 8052, 8751, 8752 microcontrollers and it is not available in 8031 and 8032 microcontrollers. Then with this we come to the end of the video. If you like the video please press the like button and share with your friends and subscribe our channel engineering and technology for you for again we are going to come up with new videos on 8051 microcontroller thank you